Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about the menstruation cycle. Menstruation cycle is a topic that scares a lot of undergraduate and high school students, uh, but we're going to try to talk it in as simple terms as possible. I'm going to be talking about the hormonal changes, changes that take place inside of the uterus, and changes that take place in ovary during the menstruation cycle. So let's start talking about the hormones first. So our hypothalamus, hypothalamus is a group of cells located in our brain. Our hypothalamus, it secretes this hormone called gonadotropin releasing hormone, abbreviated as GNRS. And this hormone, in turn, stimulates the anterior pituitary gland. Now this gland is also situated in our brain to produce follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. And the follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, they in turn affect the ovary. This is a picture of my ovary to develop follicle. Follicle, this is this shows development of a follicle. Follicle contains egg, and as the follicles are developing, the egg becomes more mature. And at one point, the follicle sort of ruptures and the egg is released. And uh, this structure that I drew here is called corpus luteum. And corpus luteum forms after the follicle ruptures. And this is maintained by luteinizing hormone. We'll talk about this later on. And these follicles, they primarily produce estrogen hormone only. And um, this corpus luteum, like I told you, is maintained by luteinizing hormone. And this corpus luteum can produce both estrogen and progesterone hormone. Now, estrogen while it helps in gen regeneration of the endometrium after it's lost during the menstruation. Endometrium is the inside layer of the uterus. I haven't drawn it here, but um, it's made to make the uterus ready to receive a growing baby. That's what um, endometrium is, or growing embryo. And, and progesterone, it helps to maintain the endometrium, but Estrogen, it helps to regenerate the endometrium after menstruation because during menstruation, the endometrium, it breaks down and it falls out. Um, and here I drew a little diagram showing the hormones. So gonadotropin releasing hormone, it stimulates the secretion of follicle stimulating and luteinizing hormone, which in turn stimulates the secretion of estrogen and progesterone. And when the estrogen and progesterone hormone becomes a lot, they sort of provide this negative feedback so high amount of estrogen and progesterone they cause low secretion of gonadotropin releasing hormone which in turn causes lower secretion of FSH and LH and lower production of estrogen and progesterone so this is a way that they make less of themselves um, now let's get into this graph now this is the actual menstruation cycle menstruation cycle is divided into four different phases follicular phases where these follicles are developing ovulation where this follicle is fully developed and the egg comes out luteal phase the phase where there is corpus luteum and finally the menstruation where um, the endometrium it breaks and falls out so these are the four different phases and these two graphs so the changes in luteinizing hormone follicle stimulating hormone and estrogen and progesterone throughout the cycle now let's start so like I told before, during menstruation, there's low level of estrogen and progesterone, and that's what causes the endometrium to break out and fall outside. So in menstruation, we have less of this hormone, and less of this hormone, so there's nothing to cause this negative feedback loop. So less of these two hormones causes increase in this hormone, which in turn cause increase in follicle stimulating and luteinizing hormone, which can be seen in this graph right here. Now you can see that the follicle stimulating hormone increases, but not the luteinizing hormone. And you might ask, why doesn't this one increase? Now, one answer I can think of is that menstruation cycle is a lot more complicated in this. And these two graphs that I adopted from Kaplan MCAT book, this shows these major changes and the major changes are here, here, and right here. This is not major changes and of course there are menstruation cycle contents and effect of more than these four hormones. So we're, 
only going to be focusing on the important parts. So low estrogen and progesterone they cause increase of FSH and LS and they cause development of the follicle. That's why this is called the follicular phase. And uh, increase and the follicles, the follicles primarily secrete estrogen only. That's why we only see the peaking of estrogen, not progesterone in this ovulation phase. And this estrogen, normally we expect it to give this negative feedback loop to GnRH, which causes less production of FSH and LS. But something weird happens in this ovulation phase. Something strange happens and you need to know this. Instead of causing FSS and LS to be less, they spike up. The, the production of these two hormones increase during ovulation and this spike of luteinizing hormone, it causes the developed follicle to rupture and the egg literally falls outside. And fimbriae, which are the finger-like projection at the end of fallopian tube, they capture this egg and the egg enters inside this fallopian tube after that. Um, so that's what happens in ovulation and in this luteal phase I said that this corpus luteum is active and um, it's the luteinizing hormone that maintains this corpus luteum and this corpus luteum produces both estrogen and progesterone that's why we see this spike in estrogen and progesterone during this luteal phase and the spike in estrogen and progesterone they cause this negative feedback loop and less production of these two hormones. And the less production of a luteinizing hormone, when the luteinizing hormone is less, there's nothing to maintain this corpus luteum. And when there's nothing to maintain this corpus luteum, there's nothing to make up these two hormones in high amount too. And due to lack of these two hormones, as you can see, there's less of them, the endometrium breaks and blood comes out of the uterus, out of the vagina. So that is our menstruation cycle. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, pregnancy and menopause too. So let's say fertilization happens, sperm and egg, they mate with each other and it usually happens in the fallopian tube. And after the cells start dividing, forming embryo, the embryo moves this way and the baby is formed over here. If the embryo is, it settles in the fallopian tube and starts developing over there, it's called ectopic pregnancy and it's dangerous. It can result in the rupturing of the fallopian tube and uh, possibly death of women too. Um, so we're talking about pregnancy. So what happens when this um, embryo is developing is that it's the blastulized stage of the developing embryo and other stages too, they produce this hormone called human chronic gonadotropin hormone, HCG, and it maintains this endometrium. And when endometrium is produced, the body is going to have high amount of estrogen and progesterone, and that's how this endometrium is maintained. Um, that's how it's done. Uh, after about the first trimester, now trimester is first three months of the pregnancy, placenta is well developed. Placenta is an organ in developing fetus that helps in exchange of gases and nutrients between the mother and the baby. Now the circulatory system of the mother and baby is not continuous as you guys can think. Uh, they have different blood groups sometimes so it's not continuous and uh, sort of like the dividing point and the connecting point of those two circulatory system is placenta and um, after the first trimester this placenta is well developed and it makes both estrogen and progesterone, and after that, there's no HCG. Uh, HCG is the hormone that's used in pregnancy tests. So um, if this hormone is present in the pee, uh, those pregnancy testing strip, they sort of change your color and let a uh, mother know that you're having a baby. And what happens during menopause? So during menopause, the ovary becomes less responsive to FSH and LH, and when the ovary becomes less responsive to it, the follicles fail to develop. They fail to rupture or they just fail to develop and then women can't have a baby. So that concludes our discussion of the menstruation cycle, pregnancy and menopause. I hope you guys understood this video. If you didn't listen it over, I have explained it in a simple way. Thank you for watching my videos. Please post below if you guys have any question or concern. Thank you. Bye.